Hello, in this video we're going to look at, uh, well, actually a number of things. Uh, primarily, though, we're going to derive the condi conditional input demands from a Cobb-Douglas production function. So, as I said, we're going to do uh, numerous things here. Uh, first, like I said, we're going to derive the conditional input demands for labor and capital. Uh, on the way, we're going to solve for the firm's long-run total cost equation. Uh, I'll show you the use of Leopard's, Shema, Leopard's Lemma to get the conditional input demands from the long-run total cost function, and we will also quickly solve for the firm's long-run average total cost. So here we're going to start with the Cobb-Douglas production function. Notice that the exponents here uh, sum to 1, so we're dealing with constant returns to scale. So as we're going to see at the end of the video, that will imply a horizontal long-run average total cost curve. All right, uh, the first thing we're going to do is get the marginal products of labor and capital. So the marginal product of labor, taking the partial derivative of output with respect to L, we get something like this. So all I did was I, bring to, I brought down the one-third in front, so that's why we're one-third uh, in front here, or same thing as dividing by 3. And then L to the one-third minus 1 is where this minus two-thirds is coming from. We don't have to do anything with the K term. We're just treating that as a constant. Uh, as for the marginal product to capital, we're going to bring down the two-thirds in front. So there it is, the two-thirds. And then we have K to the two-thirds. We're going to subtract 1 from that, leaving us with K to the minus one-third. Nothing happens with the L term. It's treated as a constant. Setting up our optimal input mix condition, where the marginal product of labor per dollar equals the marginal product of capital per dollar. And so we're just taking our results from the last screen, the marginal product of labor, dividing it by the wage, marginal product of capital, dividing it by the price of capital, R, so the only thing that you know different here is that we're putting in the W and the R here in the denominator. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. The first thing I note is if we were to multiply both sides through by three, the threes, oops, excuse me, the threes in the denominator would cancel. So multiplying everything through by three, we can get rid of the threes. And that leaves us with this step. Uh, the next step, uh, what do I do? I take this L to the minus two-thirds and I bring it down into the denominator. So that's why this is down here now. And this K to the minus one-third, I bring that down into the denominator. I don't like to look at negative exponents, so I will tend to move those around to get rid of the, the negative signs. And the next step here, uh, we're going to do some cross-multiplying. So if we to multiply everything through by K to the one-third, k to the one-third times k to the two-thirds is just k. I just think of it as cross-multiplying. And then likewise, we're going to cross-multiply l to the two-thirds with l to the one-third, or multiplying both sides through by l to the two-thirds power. So l to the two-thirds times l to the one-third is just l. Okay, and moving on. So we're going to take this condition that we solved for, and now we're going to solve for L, and then we're also going to solve for K. So let's just solve this top equation for L. Okay, so dividing through by 2 and multiplying through by R, and we get something like this. Next, let's plug this into the production function. So where we see an L in the production function, we're going to plug in R times K divided by 2 times W. And don't forget that's going to be raised to the one-third. So after our substitution, we have something like this. I can pull out this k to the one-third multiplied by k to the, the two-thirds. So that's why we just have k down here. So k to the one-third times k to the two-thirds power is just k. And the next thing we'll do is solve for k. And this technically is our long-run conditional or contingent input demand for capital. The conditional or contingent part is that it's conditional or contingent on the quantity of output, the Q, which appears on the right-hand side. All right, um, going back up here now and kind of doing the same thing, but this time solving for K. You know, if we were to multiply both, through, both sides through by W, you'd get this. Plugging this in or substituting this into the production function, so where I see a K, I'm going to plug in. 2WL divided by R. 
And again, don't forget that is all going to be raised to the two-thirds power. And then once again, I note here L to the one-third times L to the two-thirds is just L. Everything else is still raised to the two-thirds power. We're going to solve for L. So solving this for L, we have the long-run conditional input demand for labor, con conditional or contingent, again, on the firm's level of output, the Q that's showing up on the right-hand side. All right. Um, next thing what I want to do is I want to take the firm's total cost, which is just R times K, price of capital times the units of capital plus the wage times the units of labor, and we're going to substitute in our con conditional input demands. So for K, we're going to plug in this result, and for L, we're going to plug in this result. Okay, so after making our substitutions, we have this mess. And now I'm just going to simplify a little bit. So it looks like the first thing I did, I noticed we have an R to the one-third, uh, I'm sorry, we have an R, and over in the denominator, we have an R to the one-third, so that will just simplify to R to the two-thirds power. Okay, this R divided by R to the one-third gives us R to the two-thirds. And over here, we got a W divided by W to the two-thirds, so that will simplify to W to the one-third power. All right, the next step is I'm going to factor out on the right-hand side. Oop, excuse me. I'm going to factor out. Uh, these uh, these three terms here, r to the two-thirds multiplied by w to the one-third times q. And that will leave in parentheses or brackets 2 to the one-third power. Okay, so notice again, if I were to take everything out in front of the brackets and multiply it by 2 to one-third, you would get this first half on the right-hand side. And then what's remaining over here is just one half raised to the two-thirds power. So once again, if I were to take everything over here in front of the brackets, multiply it by this last term inside the brackets, you would get back this remaining part on top here. So I did. looks like I did correctly factor this out. Uh, the next trick is we are going to um, add two to one-third plus one-half to the two-thirds power. So I get like denominators. So we got two to the two thirds down here in the denominator. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So two to two thirds, and what I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. Um, so that's the the difference here. And now we're just going to add these things up. So we've got basically two here um, plus one to the two thirds. So that's just three. And that leaves us to the two-thirds in the denominator. One final simplification that I did as we go from this step to this step up here. Um, I just brought this 3 out in front, okay, because that 3 is not raised to anything. And then this 2 to the two-thirds, I just combined that with r to the two-thirds. Okay, so r raised to the two-thirds power, and so is 2 raised to the two-thirds, uh, 2 in the denominator is raised to the two-thirds power. And so we get this. All right, so what we can do now is just to uh, uh, just show you the, the idea of Shepard's Lemma. If we were to take the partial derivative of the total cost equation with respect to r, we would get back the long-run conditional input demand for capital. So taking this partial derivative with respect to R, so bringing down this two-thirds in front, and then R to the two-thirds minus one. Okay, I'm showing you that right here, two-thirds minus one. Uh, nothing's happening with this two to the two-thirds in the denominator here, and nothing else has changed. So just simplifying that, um, so what do we got? We got the, these, um, um, these threes cancel right here. This 2 is divided by 2 to the 2 thirds, so that's just 2 to the 1 third. Uh, w to the 1 third is accounted for, 
and then now we have r to the minus one-third, and I'll just bring that into the denominator. So we saw this result before. This indeed is the long-run conditional input demand for capital. And then finally, to get back the long-run conditional input demand for labor, take the partial derivative of total cost with respect to the wage. Uh, this one is not quite as difficult, so bringing down the one-third in front, and basically you got three divided by three, so that cancels. And then W to the one-third minus one leaves us with W to the minus two-thirds, and I just brought that into the denominator, and... Uh, we're all set. That is uh, the long-run conditional input demand for labor that we saw earlier uh, in this video. And then finally, one last thing uh, that I have highlighted in yellow here. If we wanted to get the long-run average total cost, we'd take this total cost equation and divide it through by Q, which would just leave us this, okay? And what remains is just a constant. So we're showing here that the long-run average total cost in this in this example would just be uh, a constant, horizontal, slope of zero, and that is uh, shouldn't be surprised because we started this per, uh, this example video with a production function with constant returns to scale. So constant returns to scale implies a horizontal long-run average total cost equation. All right, uh, that's it. So I hope you found this video helpful.